In this video we're going to show you how to tile an outdoor space, what products to use, and how to waterproof the entire area properly. Stick around. Alright, our first task in the process is to start demolition. Now I know for a fact that there's going to be some wood damage underneath here because this isn't properly uh, waterproofed and sealed or flashed or anything of that nature. I just, I, I know that just by lifting up the corner of this uh, nasty old exterior carpet here and I can see that this is just completely rotted out on the edge because it was not flashed properly. We've got some flashing here we're going to use and it wasn't sealed properly. So in an exterior space like this, there's a lot of different ways to do it. One of those ways, the way that we are going to uh, do it, is by using an elastomeric sealer. Now, elastomeric sealer, in this particular case, is uh, for us, we bought the Red Guard brand. And I'll put a picture of it over here. So the Red Guard brand, it's, it's basically a paintable rubber and it creates a waterproof seal on a uh, surface. So we are going to do our demolition. We're going to replace whatever needs to be replaced in terms of the structure. And then we are going to put our flashing down on the edge. And I'll show you how to do that. We'll wrap it up the sides probably but in this case this trim over here isn't sort of an odd configuration so we're gonna play that one by ear usually you take off all the trim wrap it up underneath the siding but that's in a new construction well the trim wouldn't be on yet in a new construction application your siding and trim wouldn't be on yet but in this case it's gonna be a challenge because I'm not gonna rip the siding off my house to do it perfectly, correctly, that would be the way to go. However, um, this project doesn't warrant that amount of demolition on the house. So, we're going to flash it the best we can here, and uh, still correctly. We're going to paint it with our red guard, and then we are going to lay tile over it. And that's how we are going to do this exterior tiling project, step by step. Let's get started. Now, as you can see, the edge of our plywood subfloor is completely destroyed and I can see just from looking just right underneath here the uh, the joist coming across is also just eaten away. We're gonna have to replace both of those and you see the water started to enter in at the corner here as well I can literally just pull this all to pieces it's totally ridiculous to do it this way. Oh wow, this is just just terrible. So we're gonna get all this fixed. So as you can see, we've run into some pretty serious rot here. Here's the piece we cut out. We cut back about nine inches in We've got some, some solid wood back nine inches, so that, that is good. Here is our tapered joist for the front porch. And right here, uh, you can see the beam, the exterior beam right here. I don't know if there's any rot in that, but you can see this, um, this cap piece on the end. That's not good. And the siding here is all rotted out as well so that's going to have to all be replaced luckily though our beam is down further I don't see any this is pretty solid our uh, 
our joist, which is good. I'm not sure back in this corner how far it goes, but we're going to remove all this. Well, as you can see, we had a bigger issue than we imagined, but that's always what happens when you do a renovation or uh, you get into an existing home and start tearing things apart. So <clears throat> I've got the, um, there was a lot of rot here in this corner. We put a new uh, sill or ledger, whatever you want to call it. Different people call it different things. On here it's treated and we sprayed some mold inhibitor in here. We've removed a lot of the flooring and we're getting ready to replace it. And then we will do an overlayment of one quarter inch plywood. And that's going to give us a nicer surface to uh, put our uh, Red Guard Elastomeric uh, sealer or waterproofer on there. Okay, we finally got things underneath repaired. And now we're going to lay down some quarter inch plywood on the top. And that's going to give us some tighter seams for our Red Guard, something a little bit more stable and uh, something a little bit more uh, thick for our uh, tile on top. When we add down our base here, our quarter inch ply, make sure you screw it every eight inches. So that gives us a very, very stable platform. Now that applies also if you're going to use a cement backer board. Same principle you want it to be solid, a solid base for your tile. You don't want any any movement in there. Okay, now that we've gotten our damaged structure and damaged subfloor replaced and taken care of, we actually did pull back our trim. We've got our flashing bent, but what we're going to do before we attach the flashing here in the front is we're going to apply a coat of Red Guard underneath the flashing. It's just an added extra layer of protection. We're going to add that coat underneath of the flashing, kind of push that flashing in, in there. It should adhere to the flashing. Nail down the flashing and then after that cures and dries we're going to come back and we're going to put another coat of Red Guard over the entire space, including the flashing on the top. Now, like I said, you can apply the Red Guard in several different methods. You can use a trowel, use a V-grooved trowel, and apply it in one direction with the V-groove, and then come back in the opposite direction, or per actually perpendicularly, with the flat edge to smooth it out. You can also paint it on. You'll need to do that anyway, even if you use a trowel, you need to paint it on the corners. Or you can pour it out and use a, a large roller or a small roller. In this case, this is a small space. So we will use this small roller. This has a fairly heavy nap on it for being so small. This is about a half inch nap. If you're doing it on concrete, you want to use a really thick nap, probably a three quarter. And, uh, but this is smooth plywood, so it's no big deal. The Red Guard is this pink color. It is fairly thick. It will take roughly one hour to cure. Depending on your conditions, it may take up to 12 hours to cure. Once it turns from this pink color to its signature dark red color, then it is cured. Red Guard can cover gaps up to one-eighth of an inch wide. And creates a watertight, waterproof barrier.
we are back. Our Red Guard elastomeric waterproofing membrane is cured. It's ready for tile. And you're going to tile this in the same way that you would do any other tile application, however you want to have the right materials. So what we're going to use is a porcelain tile mortar that's polymer enhanced. And that will give it the ability to adhere properly to our membrane. Also, make sure your tile has the right DCOF rating. That's the coefficient of friction. That's how much friction there is when it's wet or dry. So you want to make sure those tiles are rated for the exterior, as these are. Going to need a drill to mix your mortar with a, uh, a mixer on it. Of course, some sponges for our grouting. We're going to need a trowel, either a V-notch or a, another a square deep notch. These tiles are not that big. The bigger the tile, the deeper the notch you're going to need. So, in this case, our V notch is going to work fine. You're going to need a float for your grout. And you're going to need a tile cutter. You may also want to use a, a wet saw, a wet tile saw. I don't personally have one. I don't really need it for this application. We'll use some tile nippers for any spaces that are hard to get uh, the tile around and we've got some tile spacers here i also have a dremel tool with a diamond wheel on it which will work just fine for cutting tiles what we're going to do now is we're going to snap some chalk lines we're going to lay out our tile and kind of do a, a rough dry fit make sure everything's square i i know this isn't square perfectly we'll lay them out in the proper uh, manner snap our chalk lines and then we'll get started with the mortar. All right, as you can see, we finished the tile up. The only thing we have left to do is grout and then replace our trim and then touch up paint. And that's really it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you come back and see us again. Hope you subscribe to the channel and I hope you share this video. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next time.